welcome back to Redhead Threads. I'm Jess and today I'm going to be showing you a different side of my sewing work. So today I'm going to be showing you something a little bit different. I do more than just costuming and clothes, I also do quilting. Really that was actually how I got my start. My first quilt that I made was a t-shirt quilt. I made it with the help from a woman at my church who let me borrow her faff sewing machine. Um, I was getting ready to go to college for my freshman year and realized I had too many t-shirts and I loved them all and they had lots of memories attached to them, but I didn't want to get rid of them, but I couldn't keep them all because there was no way I was ever going to wear all of them. So she helped me to put a quilt together and I still have it and I still use it all the time. My sewing business is named after my great-grandmother, Hazel Shope, and she used to make quilts for the family on her old Singer treadle sewing machine. So I have actually worked on a couple of her quilts over the years. I've done repairs to some of them. Um, a lot of times they just needed a new backing or needed to have some of the, the patches replaced or like tacked back together because they were usually hand sewn together. Um, but that kind of got me on the path to doing quilt restoration. It's a lot of stuff that I've just sort of learned on the job. My client has given me permission to document the restoration of her quilts and I'm very excited to share it with you. Every quilt that I work on is something special. The first part of the restoration process for me is always to document the original quilt very closely. I take a lot of pictures, I take notes and measurements, and I make observations about the little particular details that made the quilt special. The quilt I'm going to show you today has some things that I've never seen before, so I'm excited to show them to you. The quilt was made 40 years ago by the owner's grandmother, and it features scraps made from her toddler clothing, which I think is really special. So keeping with that tradition, I'm going to be using scraps of my own um, in similar colors to the quilt to, to put it back together. So let's talk about this quilt. I have it laid out on the floor so I can get a better look at it. Um, it is, I guess what I'd call a puff quilt. You may have seen some of these before. They're generally um, little pockets of fabric that are stuffed with some kind of batting and then they're sewn together and normally there's a backing added onto it just to kind of hold it all together. Um, this quilt I have not seen its like before but I can definitely see how the, the construction kind of came together. So this quilt was made, according to the owner, about 40 years ago, and you can see that this version of the puff quilt has been um, has been stuffed with some interesting batting. So it wasn't fabric scraps or um, or any kind of polyester or cotton batting that was used. It was actually old nylons. So it was very resourceful of the owner's grandmother to to do that. Um, obviously, you know, use what you got, use whatever you can find. So. That's, that's sort of a neat thing. Um, the squares have also not been uh, stitched together with just a straight stitch. They're actually overlapped and then zigzag stitched together. So every seam is that same red, um, come on, focus, is that same red zigzag stitch. So that's one of those details that I really try to, to pay attention to so that I can replicate that in the repairs because those are the things that make a quilt unique. Um, the, the squares were also tied together just with normal thread it looks like. So I haven't decided yet if I'm going to quilt this onto the backing with the zigzag or if I'm going to use knots through it. Um, we'll kind of see how that pans out. but. I definitely will be using that same zigzag stitch to put the replacement squares in. So you can see, and you can tell as I was laying it out, it's really kind of coming to pieces. I'm honestly surprised that it made it this, this far. Um, but we're missing a couple of squares in between, so those will be getting replaced. 
um, with fabrics from my stash and then I'm going to sort of replace a couple of the ones that are, are torn open like this one um, and, and stitch them back into the whole quilt. And some others are still intact but no longer connected. Before I ever even take on a restoration project, I open a dialogue with my customer, figure out what's the history behind the quilt, why does it matter to them, what are some unique aspects of it, and I ask for pictures so that I can see sort of what the, the damage estimate is, because unfortunately there are some quilts that I'm just not able to repair. A lot of times they haven't been stored properly, or you know the owner will run them through the washing machine and if the fabric is old enough or has been damaged in some way it will disintegrate so I highly recommend don't put your antique quilts or your vintage quilts in the washing machine there are other ways to to take care of them so one of the concerns that I brought up to this particular client is I can I can put the quilt back together as it was I can just use the zigzag stitch to to bring all the squares back together but my concern is that because so many of the squares have already gone out of the quilt, the rest are probably not too far behind, and it won't last many more years under regular use. And sometimes a client wants me to fix up a quilt so it can be put on display or just be used in a guest room on a bed um, as a bedspread, and sometimes they want to be able to use their quilt again because, hey, let's face it, quilts are, are made to be used, right? Um, so one thing that I discussed with her is the, the possibility of putting a backing on the quilt to protect it so that she can use it for longer, which thankfully she agreed to, so that is another thing that I'm going to be doing for this restoration. There was not a backing as part of the original quilt, but I do think it's going to help the longevity of this project. So at the owner's request, I chose a red fabric, just a basic quilting cotton that I'm going to be using um, as the backing. It matches the thread in a really lovely way, so I think regardless of whether I, I quilt it or not it onto the backing, it's going to have a sort of a, a nice, um, a nice finished look by the time I'm done with it. I really love scrap the quilts because there's not always a rhyme or reason to it. You kind of just are resourceful and you make use of what you have. Um, but I do also appreciate that this quilt has some semblance of pattern to it. It's sort of a an alternating design. You can see going up each row, her grandmother sort of alternated um, with squares that she had more fabric for. So I'm going to try and and keep these patterns fairly consistent. Um, so I'm going to be looking for some some tan um, linen. I think I've got one that would work pretty well for these squares. Working my way up through, and then you can see the ones in between the tan on this row are just sort of a hodgepodge of everything. So I'll try and find something that's a, like a vintage print in my stash to, to replicate those. And then we've got a couple here that, um, as the owner said, were toddler clothing. It's very clearly sort of a, a babyish print. And I can maybe find a couple in my stash that will be pretty close. Alright, so I've pulled a couple options for my stash that I think will work for the patches. I'm going to take some measurements and then I'm going to start cutting out the replacement squares for the quilt. The puffs were each two pieces of fabric, probably a little bit bigger than 4x4, four four, and then sewn around the perimeter stuffed and then sewn together. So when I actually cut the squares, I'm going to cut them probably four and a half by four and a half to give me a quarter inch seam on each side. So what I'm going to do next is sort of go square by square on the quilt and take an inventory of how many I need of each color and then get to cutting. Okay, so I finished sewing the squares and I've trimmed all of the corners and so the next thing that I'm going to be doing is flipping them inside out and starting to stuff them. Now I don't have nylons because they're expensive and women generally don't wear them anymore because they're also really uncomfortable. Um, 
but I do have some cotton and polyester batting that I'm going to be using to stuff the squares, which will have just as much longevity and I think will we'll pack in there very nicely. So I'm gonna cut that into smaller pieces so it's not just one huge wad. An interesting thing about this quilt is that over time I've seen that the, um, the nylons have actually sort of compacted and the quilt is almost like a weighted blanket. So it's actually fairly dense. So I'm gonna try and replicate that with the padding that I'm using in the replacement squares. I finished putting the stuffing in all the little squares. Um, I'm glad actually that I used my, my batting scraps instead of any kind of polyfill because they're a little lumpy, but I like that because it's mimicking the, the feel of the nylons and the patches that are still there. So ideally, other than the fabric looking a bit fresher and newer than the rest of the patches, you won't really be able to tell a difference um, which ones are replacement, which ones are original. So I'm gonna go in now and just sort of top stitch the open side. Right. See that? Cool. There it is. I'm going to top stitch that down with just a basing stitch with red on my machine because eventually all the squares are going to get laying over top of each other and they're going to get zigzagged together. Um, so the red will be masked by the zigzag stitch when I'm all finished. Well, I finished top stitching all of the little puffs, all the little pockets. Um, and what I'm going to do now is go in on my machine and do the the center stitch. On some of the patches, the original ones, I noticed that they were hand stitched, but a lot of them were actually machine stitched, and it's not just a knot, it's almost like a one centimeter line in the middle. So I'm going to add that to these patches now to carry over that detail from the original patches to the new ones. I'm going to continue seam ripping apart the worst of the quilts and get some of these bad patches out of here and I'm not going to show you all of that because that'd be very boring. But let's fast forward to reconstructing the patches. Alright, so fun fact, I have um, put all of the patches out in the places they're supposed to go on the quilt for their replacement. And uh, it's looking pretty good. I haven't sewn them down yet, but I think it's going to work. Um, but I have discovered I have four extra puffs and I don't know where they go so I don't know if I miscounted or if I'm missing one that I forgot to take out because it was ripped. That's right, we're gonna figure it out. <laughs> I'm trying to, see this is why you take before and after photos so I'm trying to compare it to to the original photo and figure out maybe where I might be missing one. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to start sewing them down and maybe I'll find along the way the ones that should have been repaired. Um, there are also a couple of squares that have been ripped open and just need repadded because the fabric's still in good shape, so I'm going to go ahead and restuff those as I go. But I think my strategy, because there are seams all over the quilt that are just coming to pieces, I think I'm going to just take it like row by row, very systematic and methodical to make sure that I don't miss anything and just start to start putting it back together. So remember I was saying there were some patches that I couldn't figure out which ones needed replaced because I had extra poofs? I found one! Here it is. That one's going to have to get cut out. I have the quilt backing piece together. I'm going to lay it out on the floor and start pinning the puff quilt to the backing. I think what I've decided to do is I'm going to quilt lines along the horizontal seams of the quilt, the short seams, and I think that will hold it together nicely while not distracting from the look of the quilt. It's always a challenge when I'm working with vintage fabrics because I don't want to put more holes in the fabric than necessary because the thing that people a lot of times don't think about is 
when you are stitching something together, it's with the purpose of holding it together. Or when you're pinning something together, you're trying to hold it together. But in order to do that, every time you stick a needle or a pin through something, you're creating another hole in it. And you're creating another place where the fabric is going to rip apart over time. So I try and make as few holes in vintage fabrics as possible, but sometimes it's just not avoidable. So I think that quilting it in this case is going to be the best option for the quilt's longevity. All right, day three, day four of this project. Anyways, it's done, but I wanted to show you the final result of the quilt. I finished it last night around 10.30 and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Ta-da! The patches have all been replaced, the stitching has been reinforced, and there is now also a backing on the quilt. So this will really help protect the quilt. Obviously when you have a quilt on top of you and when you're using it as a blanket, you normally have the backing side facing down. So by having this in place, it will protect the patches for several more years of wear and tear at least. I use the same zigzag stitch along the binding just to carry the pattern throughout. This one is ready to ship off and I'll be sending it to its owner tomorrow. Thank you again to my client for letting me document this process. As I said, part of my small business is that I do heirloom quilt repairs. Now I do have to say that since the quarantine started, I have been getting an email every two or three days with similar projects and I am totally swamped with orders right now. It's been fantastic, but also like I'm just overwhelmed. I can't take any more orders right now. So if you go to my website, you can read more about my process and what I charge for quilt repairs. Um, I'm holding off on taking more orders until the end of August. But if you have a quilt hiding away in your closet that's in need of a little bit of TLC, go ahead and check out my website and I would be happy to see what I can do for you and for your quilt. Until next time friends, like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you soon with my next sewing adventure. Bye!